in the following five minutes, I'm going to address these questions, where, when, who, and what. So let me start with the first one, where is Strings 2022 going to take place? It will be in Vienna, in the heart of Europe. Here you see a picture. Uh, Vienna, for a long time, leads uh, various rankings of cities. Uh, more precisely, it will take place at the University of Vienna. So here you see the main building, the historic building from the 14th century. And even more precisely, we will be in this historic building, and this is literally the place where we'll have lunches, coffee breaks, and also the poster session in this arcade here. Um, to be fully precise, the conference will take place in the largest uh, auditorium, the Audi Max, which uh, has 750 regular places and four wheelchair places, and this is literally how it looks now. And of course, we all hope that next year it will be accessible again to everyone. When is Strings 2022 going to take place? It will be July 18 to 22. So save the date and perhaps also save some travel money. Here are some known pre strings activities. There will be strings in, Math in Warsaw in Poland the week before. And this is the main person to contact, Piotr Sukowski. And two weeks before, there will be String Fino in Liverpool in the UK. And uh, the main person to contact will be Radu Tatar. And Additionally, there will be local outreach activities in Vienna starting from March till July, organized by Benjamin Koch. And one of these activities I mentioned here that includes the minting of a silver euro coin featuring a black hole in May 2022 by the Austrian Mint. So if you're aware of some activity, then please inform me. Uh, who is going to organize Strings 2022? Of course, it will be a large number of people, but the main two organizers will be Stefan Friedenhagen from the University of Vienna and myself from the TU Wien. And if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions, don't hesitate to contact us under this email addresses here. Of course, in addition, there will be the local organizing committee, the scientific program committee, and the international advisory committee. And if I may borrow a slogan from football tournaments, after strings is before strings. So shortly after strings, 2021 uh, will end. We're going to reestablish the international advisory committee and also the scientific program committee. What is going to happen? Well, here's a reminder of how conferences used to be. It will involve talks with other people in the same room, random discussions with people queuing for coffee, joint intake of food and beverages, also known as coffee breaks, lunches, and conference dinner, and social activities that do not require internet. And on the downside, half of the participants uh, might be jet lagged. But more seriously, there will be, of course, again, excellent review and research talks. And perhaps we'll keep some of the techniques that we learned in the last year that were perfected in Brazil during the Amazing Strings 2021. But otherwise, the intention is to go back to the good old times pre-2020. Uh, and let me finish with uh, two quotes that are sort of antipodal. So Brazil is the country of the future and always will be. It goes back to a book by the Viennese author Stefan Zweig, Brazil Land of the Future. And the second quote is that Austrians look with great confidence into the past. So I hope to see you all in the future, in one year, in Vienna. Thank you. Okay, okay so uh, thank you, uh, uh, Daniel, uh, for the virtual presentation. So now uh, the organizer actually asked me to move on to my uh, summary talk immediately after this. So I'm sort of chairing myself. So let me share the screen uh, the, my presentation. So, and then let me organize my desktop a little bit before I get started so I can see uh, people. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Good. So, uh, I'd like to thank the organizer for uh, inviting me to give this uh, summary talk. And before I begin my main task of uh, summarizing the conference, I'd like to explain first why I think the summary talk is still worth giving, even in this time of online conferences. Why do you need a summary talk when you can watch all the talks on YouTube? Well, the traditional role of the summary talk has been to review and discuss progress at the conference, highlighting major development over the last year and looking forward to the future. And I will certainly do this. As I said, all the talks are on YouTube, but this conference has been for two weeks with 100 speakers. And if you have not watched all the talks live, the Strings 2021 YouTube playlist may be a bit overwhelming. 
And some guidance may be useful in figuring out which talks to watch and in which order. And I hope this summary talk will serve as a kind of TV guide for you. And third, and this is one of the most important, is an opportunity to thank the organizers. I should also tell you that the giving a summary talk is good for you. It forces you to pay attention to all the talks, taking notes, carefully and encapsulating each talk in a few sentences. I should admit that I have not followed all the important development in our field over the past years, and it is a great way to catch up with those I missed. So giving a summary talk is good for you. And uh, if you have not done it, I highly recommend this to you. And then there is an issue with Olympic. So, so this is actually going to be my first time to give a summary talk. Uh, I've given one uh, in 2004, 2008, and 2012. And you may notice that all these numbers are divisible by four. This means that these are also Olympic years. So based on this observation and following the standard practice in our field nowadays, it is natural to propose a conjecture that Olympic happens in the year when I give a summary talk. And, uh, but this year is not divisible by four, but Olympic scheduled in Tokyo last year has been postponed due to the pandemic. So when NASA asked me to give the summary talk, I could not resist the chance to test the conjecture once more. And indeed, it seems like Olympic is going to happen in Tokyo this summer, and I hope it will be held safely. For the last two weeks, I have been living like in these cartoons, waking up before sun rises in California to watch talks and trying to make sense of them until I go to bed. The one of the wonderful feature of the Strings 2001, uh, 2021 has been the discussion session, the chat box and Slack channels. And I recall some of the interesting comment being made there. They are not meant to be a summary of these discussions, rather they are snapshot of our experiences and are meant to be appetizer for those of you who did not participate in these sessions live to go back and watch their videos. So now I'd like to tell you what I learned. So the first are uh, black hole and uh, uh, wormholes. So this is actually my summary slide uh, from string 2004 in Paris. And you notice that there are actually themes uh, that are relevant for this subject. This is a, a, a slide of Mathur's talk on fuzzball. This is a talk by Andy Strominger on black hole and topological strings. Uh, Riyad Mao gave a talk on wormhole in ADS. And uh, uh, Juan Maradocena talked about the 2D black hole. And you notice that uh, uh, um, Samir was uh, worried about uh, where are the states uh, of a black hole. And Riyadh uh, 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 was uh, worried about factorization programs. So those are the issues that are being discussed. And uh, now uh, in the past 15 years, uh, interaction with quantum information has been very important. And those became evident uh, in this string conference. For example, just before the strings 2021, the AMPS paper appeared and Rafael Busto gave an impromptu talk uh, rebutting the paper, assuring us that we will not be burned to death when we're crossing the black hole event horizon. And the Ryu Takayanagi formula was uh, uh, discovered a few years before and uh, Tadashi gave a talk about that at the strings 2011. And the connection to quantum information theory have inspired major development over the past decade. So ensemble average and wormholes. So, so Stephen Schenker reviewed the bulk explanation of long-term behavior of thermal correlation functions and discussed uh, factorization uh, puzzle. And Christian Jensen discussed how you actually can compute those things. And then there was a discussion session led by Jan de Boer, Stephen Schenker, and Douglas Stanford. Again, how is the factorization restored? And the question of whether this is a low dimensional artifact or whether it extends to higher dimensions. And there was even a question about whether type 2B strings every in 10 dimension can be ensemble average. So the vote was, uh, poll was taken about whether semi-classical gravity is an ensemble average or not. And it's evenly divided. 
there are even some people who are requesting recount. And the JT gravity and SYK model has been a very important toy model to discuss these things. And there are talks on this subject. So for JT gravity, uh, Thomas Merton discussed the relation between UB gravity and JT gravity. In some sense, JT gravity is a Q deformation of UB gravity. And Clifford Johnson shows that JT gravity is a mat random matrix model and use it to compute the various interesting quantities. And for SYK model, it has actually interesting uh, condensed matter. That's where it originally came from. And Gregory uh, Tarnoporsky uh, discussed, uh, described it in terms of conformal perturbation theory. And Jeff Morgan uh, discussed uh, uh, its efficient uh, operator spreading on network and uh, consequently its quantum advantage in quantum batteries. Quantum information and quantum gravity has been very important subject. And in Zhao uh, talked about the meeting inside with wormhole, how it is described in terms of quantum circuit. And Jeff Pennington showed the quantum extremal surface helps to reconstruct the black hole interior, even for non-evaporating black holes. And Mukunda Rangamani discussed the real-time replica wormhole. And Alexei May, Alex May discussed how the bulk uh, causality is reflected on boundary correlations. And then there was a discussion uh, on quantum information, uh, black hole information program led by Ned Engelhardt and Rob Meyer with additional contribution by Chris Arkers and Dominic Neuenfeld. And uh, one of the issue with uh, uh, the things discussed was the island formula. And uh, there was a question of what kind of non-locality uh, non to represent. In this context, Eva Silverstein pointed out that string theory has non-local effect because it's an uh, extended object, but are consistent with causality. And Edward Whitting uh, actually uh, provided a very insightful comment about the distinction between uh, evaporating black hole and the burning coal. And then there were a, a couple of more uh, poles being taken. And again, quite evenly split. So people are uh, justifiably very confused. The technique to understand uh, uh, black hole microstate uh, from a holographic point of view has advanced uh, in very high sophistication. And Samir Mathur uh, presented the calculation of uh, superconformal index as some of a complex saddle point. And Leo Pandel Zayas talked about uh, log n corrections uh, comparing both gravity and gauge theory. But these are sort of holographic boundary uh, computation of black hole microstate. And the important question is that, how do you see this from a bulk gravity perspective? And in this context, there was a very interesting discussion led by Juan Mardusen and Samir Mathur about the uh, uh, nature of a uh, place of fuzzball uh, in this discussion. And during the discussion, it became apparent that quite a few of us don't know the definition of fuzzball. We are very good at discussing things that we don't know. And uh, so Fua actually kindly gave the definition of that in Slack channel. Slack channel has been very uh, important, uh, useful. And uh, again, there was a discussion of what's wrong with non-localities that appear in the recent development in uh, rederiving of the page card, uh, et cetera. There has been great development in understanding ADS-CFT from microscopic point of view, uh, in some sense, proving duality. Uh, so Matthias Gabardier proposed a string dual for free n equal four super young mirrors in the planar limit in terms of free bosons and free fermions on the worksheet and shows that spectral matches under some assumption. And Lawrence Eberhardt demonstrated that tensionless string in ADS-3 with NS flux uh, the sum over target space geometry is carried out by string excitation. So that means that if you additionally sum over geometry, that's redundant. And so in some sense, perturbative string theory is background independent. And this also raises the possibility that perhaps you can solve the uh, wormhole factorization program in this way. Kumran Buffer sent me a message saying that uh, this redundancy of sum of ge geometry may be related to his cobordism conjecture. So then there was a discussion led by Rajesh Gopakumar and Shin Yen on when you say probing duality, what do you mean to prove and how to prove? And then there was a, discussion, a description of some example where we have succeeded in doing that, like uh, duality between topological cross string and Chan Simon theory. And more recently, this uh, uh, great de development between tensionless string and free series. And uh, uh, 
So the discussion about the place for Basilius theory in this context and offer Haroni uh, ever precise about his use of word uh, uh, says that it's very important to distinguish the notion of duality and correspondence. There are no, a discussion on non perturbative approach. So Ashok Sen uh, presented a very impressive calculation of the instant on contributions uh, and without assuming its dualities and reproduce all these series. And uh, the demos, in particular, I've made a point that string field theory is very useful in these calculations. So this will bring me to the uh, discussion led by Yuji Okawa and Barton Sbiba, very well chore choreographed presentation about achievement, progress, and recent development and open questions in string theory, theory, theory theory. And there are a lot of interesting discussion like Nathan Berkowitz asked, what is the space of string field? And she pointed out that this is actually the only way to describe Ramon Ramon Flux background uh, systematically so far. And Ashok Sen again made a point that string field theory is actually a very useful way to systematize world sheet calculation. There are a lot of uh, discussion, uh, development in techniques in amplitude and understanding them. So uh, even application to LIGO physics, so Alfred Weber reviewed how uh, quantum field theory scattering amplitude can be used to calculate uh, general relativity observables. And Frank Coronado demonstrated that uh, uh, N equal four super amulets calculation can reveal emergent 10 dimensional structure. So this was maybe something that related to Daniel's question uh, at the discussion session before. And then Anastasia Borovich, uh, you presented a very impressive development in calculation of Prana N equal four super amulets amplitude uh, with deep mathematical structures such as cluster algebra, probic graphs, and tensor diagrams. And uh, Freddy Cachazo and Lionel Nason uh, this, uh, led discussion of worksheet approach to these field theory calculations, uh, in particular, ambi twister string. And Nason asked, uh, well, in this approach, how do you integrate over the moduli space? And Rajesh asked, uh, how you can see the causality in the actual space line rather than in the twister space? Again, there is a very impressive calculation of string part, uh, part of string amplitude by Olivier, uh, reported by Olivier Schroeter, uh, 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 please excuse me, and uh, described one to three loop amplitude, no spurious dependence on location picture changing operator, and explicit integral over uh, modular space have been carried out and demonstrating agreement in NSR formalism and pure uh, spinner formalism and testing some of the duality predictions, very impressive achievements. And then there are a lot a very interesting discussion on high energy limit of string theory by, led by David Gross and uh, Gabriel Veneziano, wonderful overview by these people. And uh, uh, after the, uh, during the discussion, Juan pointed out that the regular behavior uh, in high energy related to the reactive behavior. So it's very interesting that there is a, a relation between high energy in the bulk and chaos in the black hole state. And she raised a question of to what extent, uh, so these discussions are mostly, have mostly been part of in the context of perturbative string or semi-classical gravity. So to what extent does a string perturbation theory capture the hard scattering limit? And S-matrix bootstrap uh, has been very, very powerful. And Leonardo Rastelli uh, reviews the development of what he called a quantitative swamp plant program. And in particular, now uh, uh, you can actually incorporate the effect of gravity and uh, prove that the, uh, lead, that leads to the proof that the uh, large, uh, large CFT with large gap has a local radius dual with sharp bound. And in this development, causality and crossing symmetry have been very important concept. And those are discussed by Simone and Sebastian. Uh, 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 then there is a discussion led by Fuar Penedones and Sasha Ziboedov and uh, about S matrix bootstrap. And uh, uh, so, Volodya uh, Katohov, uh, uh, this is a little bit uh, uh, deviating from uh, S matrix approach, but is there any progress in search of uh, non supersymmetric conformal field theory in four dimensions? So, these are still outstanding questions. And in some sense, uh, this approach is uh, complementary to a constructive approach of uh, uh, con uh, constructing landscape of theories. This is rather putting restriction on this. So this is very much like the swamp land idea, 
which leads me to uh, the, uh, review the discussion on swampland. And uh, this was first uh, 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 presented at a string conference by Kumram Buffer in 2006 in Beijing. Uh, uh, Irene Valenzuela uh, gave a nice uh, a review of the progress in this area for the last three years or so. Uh, so uh, there is now a web of these swampland conditions uh, and connected by these three basic conjectures, uh, no global symmetries, weak gravity and distance conjecture. And she talked about some new development and the phenomenological implications. Cameron Buffer gave another conjecture uh, that the landscape of consistent quantum gravity theory is finite and using species bound to uh, uh, relate it to various other conjectures such as the bound on the type of topologies. So of course, these can have implication on cosmology and particle physics. So, uh, so when I first gave my summary talk at the Strings 2004, the KKLT construction was a, a very important subject. And in fact, this was presented at uh, uh, Strings 2003 in Kyoto that uh, I was one of the organizers of. And uh, so in anthropic principle was very exciting and it even made it to the, uh, my joke slide uh, at the end of the uh, summary talk. And uh, there was a discussion uh, led by Miriam Tsvetik and uh, uh, Gary Shu on string universality. And then there was an additional contribution by Lin Ding, uh, uh, Miguel uh, Montero and uh, uh, Pablo Sola. And uh, uh, during the discussion, uh, Thomas Van Riet made a point that our first job in all of this should be to settle the question of modular stabilization and scale separation, because the answer to this question can affect the choice we make in the phenomenological uh, applications. And uh, Eva Silvestan made a very important point that any universality claim like this must be consistent with all the ingredients of the theory we know and all the models we have. And Farmer Armstrong pointed out the need for a microscopic framework to understand the cosmological solution, something we just had discussion at uh, a discussion session too. Uh, Daniel Baumann and Eva Silverstein uh, led the discussion of cosmology in string theory. Uh, the cosmology poses a unique challenge to string theory, and uh, in particular because all inflation models are UV sensitive, and we have to uh, pay attention to root rich and highly structured landscape of string theory. Uh, Juan, in this re uh, relation, pointed out that uh, there will be a precision uh, measurement of uh, uh, the R coming uh, up uh, very soon. And so it's very important uh, uh, to understand before uh, this R is bounded by experiment. And uh, Mark Van Ramstong uh, uh, asked whether it's easier to construct a stabilized dojita or rolling one. There was a question of whether you can actually construct the dojita space from string theory. So Mariana Grana proposed a tadpole conjecture relating uh, inequality between flux and uh, the number of moduli. And then we heard the, one of the best line at the strings conference this year, uh, 10 to the 272,000 vacuum are not phenomenologically relevant. And then, uh, however, Fernando uh, Marchesano suggested there is actually a counter example to this conjecture. And uh, Mariana rebutted that at the Slack channel that I would like to encourage you to review. And on the positive side, uh, uh, Gonzalo Torobar described the Dogita solution in M theory by compactifying on negative curvature space. Uh, but Edward Whitney asked whether the construction is parametrically controlled. And then there was a discussion led by Shamit Kachiru and Fernando uh, Quevedo. And uh, Arthur Hebecker uh, uh, raised that uh, the singular bulk problem is one of the serious challenges to KKLT. And Sandeep Toribedi says that since we don't, do not have parametric control in this construction, we should compute the first correction to check if the claim are reliable. And from this, we need to develop theoretical tool to compute Ramon Ramon background. And again, this leads to some of the earlier discussions. There was also a lot of discussion about the uh, novel class of conformal field theory, surprising uh, a higher dimensional conformal field theory uh, with large central charge, dead end and sparse spectrum predicted by KKLT. So this is something that uh, 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 conformal field theory techniques such as bootstrap can be useful in addressing. In discussing all of this, I would like to put this in, in, in context. So landscapers are claiming anthropic principle, swamp landers are claiming universalities, and I should say both are extraordinary claims. So it's important to test these ideas. And fortunately, 
lot of technical progress has been taking place. Being scrutinized is a very good thing for you. And uh, we should all support, uh, support, encourage, and participate in this kind of activities. The changing a gear a little bit, again, in my uh, summary talks at 2004, Mike Douglas actually predicted that no supersymmetry will be predicted uh, the, the, the detected, uh, discovered at the Large Hadron Collider a few years before uh, LSG was uh, turned on, based on his statistical approach to study the uh, space of uh, a string vacuum. And then there was a discussion of artificial intelligence uh, in string theory this year. So Lara Anderson actually discussed a very interesting pattern on Yukawa coupling and the application of machine learning to ca calculate the metric in Carabial space, even in the case when you have a uh, SU3 structure and the structure is non kaler And then there was a discussion of uh, uh, discussion led by Mark Douglas and Fabian Ruele of what can machine learning, uh, what can machine learning do for physics, or conversely, what physics can do for machine learning. For example, can duality turn a uh, difficult problem, hard problem into simple problem, for example. There was a long discussion uh, of a thread at the Slack channel uh, on this subject. Of course, if, uh, we should confront experiment and observation, look for a way of doing this. This is something we discussed at the discussion session. The ABLZ means uh, uh, reviews the uh, uh, progress of parallel timing array and the potential to detect the effect from cosmic string. And Nima Arkani Hamed and Lan Prediction led discussion of particle physics challenges. Uh, and in particular, there are various opportunities such as the fate of B minus L and the relation of dark energy and neutrino masses uh, and uh, actions. And Gabriele Veneziano pointed out that if modularizer are stabilized, we have prediction. So again, the modular stabilization is very important for us. Finally, I'd like to discuss uh, uh, what uh, the quantum field theory because uh, that's one of the techniques that uh, we have that very important to develop. Uh, so we have a discussion of effective long string. So offer a Haroni review the universality aspect of long effective string. And in fact, in particular, first several universal terms uh, can be controlled. And uh, uh, also large and confining strings should have worship description at all energy scale. So that means that Again, he's very careful with his word, and in his definition of the word, they are fundamental strings. Uh, John McRibby discussed the mean string theory as a generalization of Landau paradigm of one form symmetries. And then there was a discussion led by Sergei Dubovsky and Igor Klebanov on uh, QCD string. And uh, then there was, a dis there, there was a discussion of asymptotic integrability of long strings that will come up later. And uh, uh, then uh, there is a, a, a very important development on generalized symmetry and its application to new phases of matter. And Shufen Shao reviews symmetry and their generalizations, uh, in particular, higher form symmetry, subsystem symmetry, and non invertible topological operators. And then uh, Sakura Schaefer and Nameki uh, discussed uh, 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 theories arises from string theory that have no obvious Lagrangian description and discuss higher form symmetry in this context. And then Jamo Gomez and Zofa Kamorowski discussed when, uh, the, how to diagnose uh, 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 the existence of gap or gapless state uh, by using these symmetries. And both of them uh, derive necessary and sufficient condition for, for these conditions. So those are very important development. Uh, Horacio Cassini shows that there are symmetries related to a uh, certain simple property of uh, 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 quantum field theory, algebra re uh, region relation uh, quantum field theory. And Damson discussed the new development in fractional quantum hold effects. And then there was a discussion led by Nati Zyberg and Shaogan Wen uh, about uh, general symmetry and in particular new phases of matter. And uh, uh, Shaogan actually talked about uh, swamp plant uh, in condensed matter physics and uh, uh, and then there was a discussion of how, can we can, how much we can extend the notion of quantum field theory. So Stephen Schenker raised the uh, point about the TT bar deformation. And then Nima Arkami Hadamed pointed out that where well, in this condensed matter swamp plant, there is a, con a completeness is a very important. And but in the context of gravity, completeness has to do with the existence of black holes. So what's going on? And uh, Daniel Harrow has a response to that question. 
And integrability has been a very powerful tool in understanding a strongly coupled effect in quantum field theory. And Shota Komatsu reviewed the integrability of NQL4 and MIRS, and in particular uh, discussed the finite T uh, behavior, such as radius of convergence. And he, uh, point, uh, he actually demonstrated that uh, in this context, uh, there is a precise sense where a large and Feynman diagram is related to string or sheet in ADS. And Konkao, uh, when calculated the integral of correlator of n, n equal four superior mirrors and shows the modular invariances, uh, uh, these are one of the formulas. And, uh, and then she also in Mara showed that the partial function of large and chance Simon theory on S2 times S1 is the effective result of the Fox phase constrained to the decimal you know, within singlet. Yuji Tachikawa used the cigar stores and Taikina conjecture to demonstrate the cancellation of Z24 global anomaly in 2D heterotic compactification. Michael Adodushenko discussed the interface between different gauge theory with eight supercharges. And Kevin Costero described a remarkable new uh, quantum field theory in four dimensions that comes from six dimensional Twitter space by putting holomorphic Chan Simon theory coupled to Kodaira Spencer theory. And these series, these four dimensional series are apparently non renormalizable, but there are no counter terms. And this has an amazing property like integrability, periodic renormalization group flow, and the relation to celestial holography. And then there was a discussion led by Volodya Kadakov and uh, Gregory uh, Korchemsky on integrability and the exact result. And then uh, there was a question of uh, how this is extended to larger class of gauge series, such as non-conformity gauge theory. But in non-conformity theories, there was a discussion of asymptotic uh, integrability, not exact integrability. And then there was a question of reduced SUSI. And very interestingly, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, Eddie Pomoni and the collaborator posted a paper with exactly such a subject. So she described some of that. That brings us to the last day. And uh, since we just had this uh, 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 talk and I did not have time to summarize it, so I'll just present the uh, list of talks. And, uh, but uh, the talk, some of the important theme was uh, celestial, celestial holography. And uh, again, there was a common thread with other part of the conference, such as existence of W infinity symmetry. And so these are the list of speakers and discussion leaders on this subject. And then we just had this uh, discussion on perspective on string theory by Michael Green, John Schwartz, and Ed Whitton. But of course, other important talks, uh, uh, there are other important scientific activities. I think one of the wonderful things was that we had a gong show with uh, this list of uh, uh, 11 speakers, and they're all wonderful. And of course, these are our futures, and I'm very happy to see them all. And poster session was also wonderful. There were 50 rooms, if I remember it correctly, and I visited several of these and had a wonderful discussion. There was also a very nice outreach activities, a public lecture by Jim Gates, and then Ask a String Series moderated by David Ross. It's opened with a question of what is String Series, something we just discussed also. I'd like to make a couple of comments about demographics. So first of all, uh, uh, there were, this was the largest students conference ever, both in terms of number of participants and speakers. And uh, I'm happy to see that 80% of speaker were female. And in this context, there was a discussion led by uh, Miranda Chen, Kiara Nappi, Shruti Paranjape, and uh, Sylvia Penati on uh, women in string theory. And a very important point was made about the issue of pipelines. There are several bottlenecks in career of female theorists. And we need safe and inclusive and welcoming working environment. And we should be uh, careful about uh, unconscious bias. And outreach mentor and child care support are important. Henrietta Erben uh, pointed out in the uh, Slack channel that there is actually a study in University of Michigan about pandemic inequality. So some of us think that, well, the, the pandemic has been actually very good for, for me because uh, well, we can stay home, we don't have to travel, and uh, we can be productive. But that's not uh, always the case for uh, uh, everyone. And in fact, one third of the people reported in the University of Michigan that challenge due to caregiving, such as uh, a, a, a family with uh, young children, 
uh, have caused uh, challenges in, in this, and uh, this uh, issue needs immediate attention. So in all of this context, I'd like to make one advertisement that uh, at the Cabri IPMU, actually we are soliciting application to assistant professor in STEM gender research. And uh, just to, so that uh, uh, research can be done uh, to find out what we can do to address these issues uh, based on uh, evidence-based research. And if you, are, uh, if you have anybody who may be interested in this type of uh, position, uh, please let them know. Another question is that, are we getting younger? So, well, I can't tell you how old you are, but uh, I, can, I can see uh, the year that the uh, speaker got their PhD. And from that, I can at least see that where I am uh, among all these speakers. And uh, so I have data from my uh, the past years when I gave uh, summary talks. So at the Strings 2004, I was actually a younger part of the speakers, but my position gradually declined. And now I'm at the top 22 percentile of uh, uh, speakers. And amazingly, this actually fits very well with this linear curve. So what this means is that uh, there is a constant flow of young people coming in, which is a very good thing. There are other things you can deduce from this formula, which is left to the exercise of the uh, audience. So there is a, actually also chat and Slack that was a very important feature. And I actually solicited the comment on over SNS uh, from participants and I got a couple of them. One of the uh, distinguished string theorists pointed out that organization of this year's strings conference has been amazing. I've never seen this level of open, honest, reflective discussion in a conference with more than 300 live participants. Another distinguished theorist sent me a message saying that uh, this type of format makes the conference much more accessible experience for many. And the organizer has done a superb job. And in particular, Pedro has been consistently amazing in moderating discussion. And of course, I would like to also uh, praise uh, Pedro for the organization of the uh, leading of the discussion. But there are also lots, many others who worked very hard uh, in the background. I have organized the Strings Conference three times uh, at Santa Barbara in Kyoto and Okinawa most recently. And I know that are, these are actually non-trivial tasks. And so, so I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, people who made this conference possible. First of all, uh, our host, uh, uh, ICTP Cypher, led by Nathan Berkowitz. And these are some of the uh, council members, uh, former and current council members uh, who contributed to this conference. Of course, uh, running conference requires some fund and this organization uh, supported the conference. And the last and not the least, I'd like to thank the local organizer uh, for the uh, wonderful experience we have had over the last two weeks. And uh, uh, we'd like to thank the next year's uh, conference organizers. And I hope to see you all in person next year uh, in Vienna. And instead of us uh, uh, now, uh, before I close, and instead of asking for questions from the audience about my summary talk, I'd like to request uh, local uh, uh, organizers and staff member to turn on their video so that their contribution can be acknowledged by the participants. So first, uh, let's wait until they turn on their video and we should all clap and thank them for the experiences that they have given to us uh, for the last week, two weeks. Thank you very much. So thank you, Hiroshi. Before everybody goes away, can you do us a favor and turn on your camera so we can just take a picture of everybody? <laughs>